Whenever we talk about serious sports injuries, we often hear of things like Achilles tendon ruptures, ACL tears, fractures, dislocations, but two of the things that make us most scared as doctors when it comes to sports injuries are when there's any concern for blood flow and nerve damage. And those are the two things about the injury we're gonna to discuss today that make it one of the most potentially devastating and severe injuries an athlete can suffer. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those new, my name is Brian, and I'm a doctor who's also a big sports fan, and it's my goal on this page to combine those two interests to help explain different sports injuries in a way that's easier for the casual fan to understand and hopefully learn from. The topic for today's video is going to be UCF quarterback McKenzie Milton, specifically talking about the knee dislocation and subsequent damage that he suffered during this past college football season. If you followed my page previously, you might have seen the video I did on Sean Livingston talking about his knee dislocation that he suffered in the NBA. This video is gonna go in a little different direction. We're gonna talk about some basic things similar to Sean Livingston's knee dislocation, but also hit on why McKenzie Milton's was drastically different and potentially much more severe and career threatening. As usual, let's run the tape and take a look at the actual injury itself. So rolling the tape here, we can see McKenzie Milton roll out to the right to try to make a play. And as he's running down the field, a tackler comes in, makes contact with that knee, which causes it to ultimately dislocate. Now, as we learned about after the game and have subsequently learned since then, he's gone on to have a number of surgeries. I think it's somewhere around four to five surgeries he's had. And they've made comments talking about restoring blood flow and talking about potential nerve damage. So what I want to do first is review our anatomy to talk about what different structures are involved when those reporters are talking about nerve damage and blood vessel damage and why this is so severe. First to review the basic bones, we have the femur up top or the thigh bone. We have the tibia down low or the shin bone you can feel in the front of your leg. And then on the outside, we have the fibula. Now, while all that stuff is important, that's not really the reason why this particular injury was so devastating. To understand that, we have to take a look at what we find on the back side of the knee. So this whole area is called the popliteal fossa, and it's basically the space on the back side of the knee where all these important structures run. If you can see, we have a vein here in blue, a red, that's the artery, and then this gold structure is the nerve in the back of the leg. Up here, higher in the leg, that's your sciatic nerve, and that continues down to the knee to ultimately become what we would call the tibial nerve down lower, and that goes on to supply the muscles in the calf. Let's first talk about why blood flow matters in these injuries. So as I mentioned in the Sean Livingston video, whenever we have our knee, all right, and we completely dislocate it or pull it out of socket, you can imagine what might happen to these blood vessels. So if I were to completely rip or tear those blood vessels, nothing's getting down to the bottom of the leg. And our muscles, all the cells in our body need blood to live. If you remember hearing the stories about McKenzie Milton, they talked about the very first thing they tried to do was restoring blood flow. And so there must have been some sort of damage to that blood vessel on the back of his knee that they had to go in and repair. So let's say we've taken care of the blood flow problem and now we need to address the rest of the structures in the knee. Now the unique thing I wanna discuss with this particular injury involves the nerves anatomy. We can see our big main nerve coming down the back of the knee and then the backside you can see a piece kind of split off. And that piece that splits off is what we call the common perineal nerve. It wraps around on top of the fibula and then goes into the front of the leg and divides off again to help control the muscles that raise our foot up and kind of control the rest of our foot movements. So why the heck does this matter? Why is this nerve really, really important when it comes to McKenzie Milton's particular injury? If we look back here, and I'm gonna pull up a picture. So if you imagine this is his right knee, you can see that that space basically got pulled, all right? And so he had this huge gap right here in his knee. And if you imagine that nerve that's coming down right here in front is right in that area. And so it's really, really susceptible to getting stretched and sometimes even getting completely torn. Okay, so, so what? Why is that important? Why does it matter what's going on with that particular nerve? The deep portion of that nerve that splits off and goes deep into the lower leg muscles controls the muscles of our leg that primarily are involved in what we call dorsiflexion. And dorsiflexion essentially means picking the foot up. So our calf muscles, those are all pushing the foot down, but these muscles in the front of our leg are helping to pick our foot up. If you've ever heard of somebody having something called foot drop or having to wear a brace like this on their leg, 
that's typically because that nerve is weak and can't pick up the foot. So whenever you're walking and you're swinging your leg through, your toe just drags. You can't pick your foot up to bring it through your gait cycle and it just drags behind you. And you can imagine how important that nerve is for someone like a football player who's running. If you completely cut that nerve, you're not gonna be able to pick your foot up at all and you're not gonna be able to really run without wearing some crazy brace or something. So last year, I wanna walk through the kind of sequence of these multiple surgeries he had and what might be going on with the nerve in terms of how they're going to fix it or correct it. You've heard me talk about open versus closed injuries. So an open injury, meaning the joints exposed, the bones are exposed. If that's the case, they're probably gonna go in and explore that nerve right away. However, if everything is still contained inside the skin, they typically aren't going to go in and explore that nerve function for a couple of weeks because the nerve can be stunned, for lack of a better word, and sort of give false information about the long-term function of it. So that's potentially what some of these later surgeries were after the initial one, restoring blood flow, were to go back in and just explore and see what that nerve looked like and test actually with needles and electricity to see if it was transmitting signals. Now, when they actually get in there, one of the things they're gonna be looking at is to see whether or not there's a gap or a, an empty space in the nerve, or if the nerve is still continuous. In Milton's case, it sounded like they said the nerve was intact, so that's really reassuring. Nothing had actually been cut or degenerated to where the nerve was missing part of its structure. And typically, if everything looks pretty good, there's no other structures around it, they just kind of wait and watch it. They'll do various tests on clinical exam and with something we call an EMG or nerve conduction studies to determine what the overall health of that nerve is as he continues to go through his recovery. Now, if at any point in that recovery process there starts being more pain in the area of that nerve and where it's feeding, then they're probably gonna go back in and explore that area again to see if something new has changed or if something's developed that's pushing on that nerve or damaging that nerve. And that process kind of starts over. They'll go back in. If there's a gap in the nerve, they can do nerve grafts where they actually replace it with a nerve from somewhere else in your body to try to bridge that space. You can get these things called neuromas that are essentially these benign sort of growths that can happen on the nerve that they'll try to excise and cut out. And sometimes you can just have buildup of scar tissue and swelling that pinches that nerve and causes you to have more pain and impaired nerve function. So I don't know for sure, but there's potential that some of these additional surgeries that they've been doing are focused on that nerve function. Now, obviously at some point he's going to have to have reconstruction of the ligaments in the knee that were torn and damaged, but part of that could potentially also be to study the function of that nerve. So to sum up here, certainly everybody wants to know if he's gonna get back to playing football and all these sorts of things, but I think it's important to take a step back and look at just overall functional return. I mean, anytime you're talking about someone with nerve damage following a knee dislocation, that could potentially just limit their ability to control the muscles in their foot and ankle. And so forget about running and playing football. Think about just walking around your house or working and kind of doing normal daily activities. Those are gonna be the big things to follow first. Once those come back, then you can start thinking about that athletic ability and all those skills needed for something like football. That's it for this video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Really appreciate all the great feedback and suggestions I get for future videos. Make sure you go check out the page to see what videos I have done and talked about before requesting specific ones in the comments because we've covered quite a number so far. And again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.